Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that knows that you've got a bladder infection. But hey, on a scale of 1 to 10, you're an 8. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Absolute War, the Russian Front, 1941 to 1945, from GMT Games. In Absolute War, the Russian Front, 1941 to 1945, one to two players take on the roles of the belligerents in that eastern conflict. You can either play as the Germans or as the Soviets. The game board is a map of Eastern Europe. You also have various holding boxes for destroyed units, captured units, as well as air power and some other little goodies as well. Now, the game boasts several different scenarios. There is a Barbarossa campaign, there is a mini Stalingrad map, there's a Kursk scenario. So you can go ahead and select which scenario you want to play before you get started. Now, you can also play one of three uh, rule sets. You can play a basic game, a regular game, or an advanced game. Now, the various counters on the board represent either armies or core level command. This is kind of a grand epic war on the Eastern Front here. You'll notice, too, this is not a hex encounter game. That is to say, there are a few hexes which represent cities, but generally you have regions. Generally, at the beginning of the game, you're going to advance the turn track. If there are any kind of red uh, events in there, there are certain events that will trigger that you will then have to resolve. Next, on a player's turn, they will kind of resolve supply phase. They want to make sure they can trace a line of supply from each unit back to their home base. Otherwise, they will suffer penalties. Each player also has a number of combat markers. These things represent attack and support that you're going to go ahead and place on the board to indicate which units are attacking where and which units are supporting them. Next, players are going to draw cards. Typically, you're going to draw one offensive card and you're going to draw four event cards. Next, you've got the strategic phase. You can kind of build units and, and move units. You can take a unit off the board and then uh, place it in a holding box and then later place it anywhere else on the board as though it's being railed uh, somewhere along the line for later use. Now, during the combat phase, the non-initiative player may also announce which units are going to support, which units are going to be attacked, and uh, they can also play a, uh, an event card, as can the other player. But when you play these cards, they're going to indicate a number of, um, essentially, pips or bursts that represent different things during the game. A yellow burst means that that unit can attack, support, defend. A gray burst means that unit can just uh, attack or defend. An orange burst means that that unit can attack. And a white unit means that that unit can only defend. You're going to go ahead and total up the number of bursts depending on what role that specific unit is doing. And then you're going to, again, play your card. First the non-phasing player, then the phasing player can play a card. You're going to look and see what bursts there are on those cards. You're going to add that to your total. So you're going to add up the relative strengths from one who is attacking with their support and the other who is defending with their support. Now once each side has uh, totaled their total combat power, you're going to subtract the defender's combat power from the attacker's combat power. And then you're going to draw another card. Now on that next card that the attacker will draw, it will actually have at the bottom of the card a number of uh, possible outcomes. Depending on the difference and that, that number that is the difference, it will say exactly what happens. The attacker, uh, you know, does not advance, the defender retreats, the defender holds still, the defender is is routed. Essentially it's going to say what happens on that card to a unit in the battle. Now also two off your offensive card, if you've declared major offensives, you're going to go ahead and get other uh, points for that resources. Now also too, if you attack into different terrain under certain conditions, it's not going to be a full battle, it's going to be an assault and there are some slightly different uh, rules for that. Next, you're going to deploy reserves. If you have any reserves on the board, uh, you can go ahead and place them into their new locations at that time. Next, any markers that you had on the board, again, for attack, support, whatever, you would, you would flip them over to done after the attack happens. You, at this point, reclaim all of those from the board. 
Finally, you're going to look at various objectives that you may have taken. If you've succeeded in taking those objectives, you may have scored war status points. You go ahead and move yourself up on the war status point track on the board. Now each round, after both players have, have taken a turn, you're going to check for automatic victory. Now essentially there's two ways to win. If you can get to a certain number of war status points uh, at a certain time, then you can claim victory. Also too, there are kind of war aim zones. These are spots on the board, like Moscow, Leningrad, and etc. that if uh, the other side is able to capture enough of these, then they win instantly. So whichever side succeeds in fulfilling their objectives first wins! Absolute War! The Russian Front, 1941 to 1945. All right, so there is a there's a lot more going on in this game than what I just put out there. I'm just just that was just the bare bones, basic rules of what happens each turn. Um, there's again a lot of nuance. There's a lot of exceptions. There's a lot of little things here. Don't look at my rules breakdown as all you need to know to play this game. Um, there are other uh, videos out there. I know there's one video I was looking at that that, that uh, helped me with some concepts. Um, I don't remember who did it, but it was a good video. So look, look, look elsewhere if you're looking for a complete rules breakdown, or better yet, read the rules yourself. Now, as I say, there's a basic game, there is a regular game, and there is a um, an advanced game. Uh, I'm basically looking at the regular game here. The basic game, you don't draw the offensive cards. Um, there is uh, uh, s some more things you don't have to worry about in, in, in the basic game. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit lighter, but there's still a lot of meat there as well. Now, one thing I do need to let you know is I have not played this game against a living human opponent. Uh, I have just played this game Solitaire, which comes with some, some restrictions uh, on how you play, a little bit of differences. I'm not really going to get into that either at, at the moment. Um, just want to, again, give you the brief overview of how the game is played and tell you what I think. So first of all, let me just say this. Um, GMT games... Uh, I know that they advertise this as a low complexity Eastern Front war game. Um, I don't know, even with the basic game, I don't know that I'd call it a low complexity Eastern Front game. I would probably call it a lower complexity Eastern Front game. That is to say, there's a lot of Eastern Front games that I have seen that are really, there's a lot to it. There is a lot to it. And this one definitely is more accessible. It's definitely more accessible. That having been said, there's still a lot of stuff here you need to be on top of. There's still a learning curve. Um, so just be aware of that. It's 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 low complexity, but you know if, if you're not really a war gamer, you're looking to get into war games, I don't know that I'd start here. Um, but if you're somebody who, you know, you, you're looking for something a little bit with a little bit more meat to it than Axis and Allies, this is a game I think you, might be a good gateway here for you. A um, couple things about the game. Um, I, I really like the board. No surprise, GMT makes beautiful maps. Uh, board's brilliant. Um, I really like the the kind of, you know, you're playing army level, and there's a few core here. You know, the Russians have the fronts, right? Um, so it's it, 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 it's epic. You, you get an epic feel with this game. You really get a sense of the scope of, the, uh, of Barbarossa here. And not, you know, not... It's one of those things where, unless you're playing one of those really, really heavy games, um, sometimes I don't think you get a you get a real grand feel. You certainly don't get it from an Axis and Allies or something like that, of just how massive this this operation was. Like three million men, three million Germans, I think, invaded there. So it's it, it's a massive war, and it's and you know as as it's represented here, it, it's represented very well. Uh, the event cards uh, are interesting. Um, they, they they generally have some some fun information, um, but I think to for for me wh what I really like about this game and where this game I think really shines is the combat system, and that's where I think you can say the game is fairly simple. Um, and I, I shouldn't say fairly simple, but 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 relatively easy. This is not a dice chucker. You're not throwing dice, and I love to throw dice. Uh, I, I love that. You don't do that here. Um, what happens is you know you tally up those. You look for the specific colored bursts, and then you um, you know, you add yours, they add theirs, you look at the difference, and then you draw a card to find out what the results are. It's actually a pretty simple and pretty elegant um, system, and I really, really like that. And the way you're, you're drawing the cards actually reminded me of um, uh, Combat Commander, where you don't roll die in Combat Commander, you actually draw a card to tell you what happens. It's got the die printed on it, but I mean, still, it's, 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 I like that idea of the, the card draw with the random information. Uh, for for what happens in any given scenario, and I and I I really got a kick out of that. I thought I thought combat in this game was just stellar. Um, I do think even with the basic game, there's the, 
eh, for, for my tastes, there are a few things that could have been streamlined, a few things that could have maybe been a little smoother, a little, a few exceptions I'd probably say, yeah, don't worry about it. Because again, and I mentioned this in my review on Fire in the Sky, um, I would much rather have a game that's smooth and playable that, that evokes the history than a game that is kind of a strict slave to history. Um, I don't mind abstraction in these kinds of games uh, if it makes the game play better. I, I, I don't. I'm not fighting a war here. I'm playing a game. And again, I realize there are some people that they want the minutia. They want the, they want the nuts and bolts of history because this is how they interact with history. I get it. I'm a, I'm a historian. I interact with history in other ways. This is a game to me. Um, and, and that's cool. And it's fine. You know, everybody has different ideas and opinions about what works for them. And they're all valid, right? They're all cool. Uh, but for me, I would have liked this game to be uh, maybe a hair more streamlined in some areas. That being said, I think this is a good, solid um, uh, war game, a good, solid Eastern Front game. It brings something kind of new, at least for, for, for me. Um, it seems like it brings something a little bit new to the, to the, to the, to the field here. Um, a game that, that uh, is, you know, relatively quick, depending on how you're playing it plays pretty smoothly um i i will say this though having said all that like i said i've just played it solitaire and i may play it against solitaire down the line but I'm, i kind of want to play this with another actual living human being i heard they exist um I, I actually would like to play this game against an opponent i think it would probably work even better and, and my opinion frankly of the game could be higher i mean who knows but i i feel like it I, I may have a better experience and i had a good experience playing solitaire but i think i may have an even better experience when i'm, and I'm playing against a human being so this is a game i'm i'm, I'm gonna keep and, and, and revisit and um i enjoy it so the game is actually titled absolute war of the russian front 1941 to 1945 it's interesting because the cards actually say uh, absolute war attack on russia 1941 1945 so i don't know what happened there so recommendation for the discriminating gamer is um, I'm kind of on the fence between a trap for you buy it and a, and a buy it recommendation, but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to throw throw all in. I'm going to say if you're looking for a good solid uh, Eastern Front game that is not too complex, you're going to enjoy this one. And with those caveats, I'm going to say go ahead and buy it. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd ask you to please give a thumb to this video, and please check us out, uh, check out my other uh, YouTube channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD. We'd ask you to please subscribe to that channel as well, and please give a thumb to this video also on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, my grandparents actually fought during World War II. So they got divorced. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Also, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to learn more about uh, war on the Eastern Front, I'd recommend you check out my channel, Cody Carlson PhD. I got a video right here uh, that is my top 10 books on the Eastern Front. Check it out, please.